Hello everyone, my name is Aniket Amdekar and in this video we are going to take a look at Wireshark. So to begin with, let's see something about Wireshark. It is world's most popular network protocol analyzer. It is used for troubleshooting network issues, analysis of packets, protocols and development and education purposes as well. Gerald Combs is the creator of Wireshark. Earlier it used to be called as Ethereal. So how it works is uh, it puts your network card into promiscuous mode to capture the packets because of which it starts accepting all the packets it is receiving instead of the ones that, that are just destined to it. It uses protocol dissectors to understand the various protocols. Uh, it has two libraries with, with the help of which it can understand how a protocol or packet looks like. So it has two libraries, WinPCAP and LibPCAP. WinPCAP is used for Windows operating system and LibPCAP is used for Linux operating system. So here are some of the examples as to how you can use Wireshark. So you can use it for troubleshooting network problems. You can use it to examine security issues you can also use it for debugging the protocol implementations you can even learn the protocol internals with the help of Wireshark so when you run Wireshark on a network you get all the packets for a particular protocol so you have the first packet then the response to that packet so you can study how each and every message is sent by the sender and the receiver in that particular protocol and Wireshark can be of great help to understand that as well. It is basically an open source software project and released under the GNU public license. That is, you can freely use Wireshark on any number of computers you like without worrying about license keys or, or such. In addition to that, all source code is freely available under the GPL, meaning you can add your own source code to the Wireshark and make it understand the new protocols that you have developed. Case Technologies is the primary sponsor of Wireshark. Um, on 21st of October 2010, Case Technologies has been acquired by Riverbed. So we'll take a look at the new and improvised user interface of Wireshark. So this is how it would look like when you open up Wireshark for the first time. So the screen has been divided into four sections. First of all, you will see the capture section where you have your interface list that will help you to choose on which interface, which network card uh, that is installed on your computer you want to run Wireshark. When you click on the interface list, that you will see the list of interfaces. You can directly either start capturing the packets or you can click on options and then you can configure the capture filters. Capture filters are very important while capturing any packets. So you can choose whether you want to capture the packets in promiscuous mode or not. You can use multiple files. So if you, have, if you plan to run Wireshark for, for a longer period on a computer and you want to save the captured packets in multiple files, in that case you can have the settings over here. You can choose a next file depending on the size. For example, Wireshark will create a new file every time the size of the file reaches 10 megabytes. For example, you can choose that uh, while Wireshark is capturing packets, if the selected file size is exceeded, capturing switches to the next file. Similarly, you can choose the size between kilobytes, megabytes or even gigabytes. You also have an option of choosing a file according to the time, every few seconds, minutes, hours and days. The other option that you have is to have a ring buffer. The concept of a ring buffer is that after capturing has switched to the next file and the given number of files has exceeded, the older file will be removed. So for example, you have configure to have three files in your capture 
maximum three files that you want to capture so once a condition is met for example first file is of 10 megabytes Wireshark will create a second file even when that file becomes of 10 megabytes Wireshark will remove the first file and capture the new packets in the first file so this is the concept of ring buffer as far as the Wireshark capturing options are concerned similarly you can also choose when do you want to stop capturing packets on that interface so do you want it to be after a certain number of packets do you want to stop after a certain number of uh, minutes so this is also very important where you can automate how do, do you want to stop capturing the packets please make sure that enable network name resolution option is unchecked because if you check that option then a DNS query will be sent to resolve that IP address into a domain name or a FQDN for each and every IP address that is included in your your packet capture that might send a lot of requests to the DNS server and will create extra traffic hence it is always recommended to uncheck enable network name resolution apart from the capture section we have capture help where you will get basic documentation on Wireshark you also have an option to open up previously captured files so if you click on open here you can choose the pcap files you can also choose the display filter while opening up these files so if that uh, if that file is containing 10,000 packets and if you provide a display filter you might get only 1,000 packets that will be relevant to your context this is also very important that uh, you have sample captures on the wiki.wireshark.org website uh, where you can download sample capture files for multiple protocols or multiple scenarios and that will help you to understand how that traffic will look like in Wireshark um, very often you will find yourself in a situation where you want to run Wireshark on a server to troubleshoot some situation or to take a look at the traffic but the network administrator may have security concerns as to it may pick up data which may not be relevant to the investigation and may result in uh, providing unnecessary information to the analyst so to avoid that you can capture the traffic on a particular port or from a particular IP address based on the requirements suppose you're troubleshooting an application which uses uh, the HTTP protocol and works on the port 80 so in this example you can configure Wireshark to capture packets on port 80 so with the help of that you will be able to capture packets only that are relevant to that application and nothing else so due to that the uh, the network administrator will not have to worry about providing unnecessary information to the analysts so to do that uh, you can use capture filters in Wireshark so basically uh, capture filters are the filters that Wireshark will take a look at and when it will pick up the packets from the network card it will match them to your capture filter only if it matches the capture filters it will be captured and it will be saved into your capture file if the traffic does not meet the capture filters it will not be shown to you let's go to Wireshark and see how we can do it okay so I'll click on capture options capture filter section I will put in as port 80 and click on start you can uh, you can check the complete list of capture filters that are available on the Wireshark website using the URL mentioned below in the next in the next section we are going to talk about uh, how do we analyze the Wireshark log files that is the pcap files and uh, what all things you should look for while creating a report for analysis as well thank you for watching